In this lecture snippet, I'm going to install Windows Server 2012 onto an actual server, and I've booted it up from the DVD disk that I have of Windows Server 2012, and so I'm going to go through the process of actually installing it on my server now. The first screen that I'm actually presented with here is the option to choose which language I want to use, and I'm going to actually use all of the defaults that we see here, so I'm going to go ahead and choose Next. I now have the option to choose to Install Now, or if you look down here in the bottom left corner, I have the option to also repair my computer, and this is going to be some startup troubleshooting uh, options that they give us, and so in this case, I want to just choose the Install Now, so we're going to go run through the installation now. I have now been presented with the option to choose which type of server I want to install. And you can see there's a big difference between standard and data center listed here. There's two standards and there's two data centers. The big difference on the licensing is going to revolve around the amount of virtual machines you want to have. And so if you want to virtualize two servers, standard is typically what you're looking for. If you want an unlimited amount or a larger number of virtualization servers, you may want to go to the data center version. Depends on which license you've bought. But I also want to point out between each of these there are two different options. I've got the server core installation which is going to be a command line based operating system or I've got the option with a GUI and this is the option I want to choose. I want to actually have that desktop to be able to use and actually set up all the roles and so forth of the server. So I'm going to choose the server with a GUI and I'm going to choose a standard edition and for the purposes of this uh, lecture snippets, I do not need to have multiple virtualization servers and so forth. So this is the one option that I want to choose. I'm going to go ahead and have next. And as always with Microsoft, you're going to need to accept a license agreement. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to accept it and choose next. Now I'm presented with the option of upgrading from a previous server operating system that I may have or cut, uh, basically an a fresh install which is the bottom, the custom install. And I rarely ever use the upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here to this bottom one and you can see that I've got multiple hard drives listed here. In fact, drive zero is currently partitioned into two different partitions. There was a previous installation of Windows on there. I'm going to go ahead now and just remove those partitions. Delete. And I'll go ahead and delete the second part of this partition one there. So I'll just choose delete and now you can see that I have currently have got four hard drives installed on my computer. One 60 gig hard drive, you can see that there, and I've also got three 100 gig hard drives. What I want to do is install the operating system itself specifically onto this 60 gig hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and leave, that's what I want to have selected, and I'm going to go ahead now and choose next. And Windows will do all the partitioning and do everything for that particular hard drive to make sure that the operating system is set up correctly. So all I need to do now is just kind of wait for the files to be installed on the disk. Once the files are installed and it goes through and check marks every one of these options, my computer will restart and I'm going to just leave it, let it restart and let it boot up by itself. It may restart a couple times, but I'm going to come back to this whenever I get the option to choose up and personalize the actual operating system for my specific user itself. My computer is now restarted and it took about 10 minutes to install those files and what actually happens is once those files are installed and your computer restarts it's actually going to load those files up into memory and actually start continuing the process of installing and so it's still going to take another 10 to 15 minutes for it to install completely but up to this point now we've actually got the files on our computer and we're going to be configuring the files that are actually on our hard drive and setting up our server. And now my computer has gone to the screen where we actually had to set up the password for the administrator account on the, app, on the operating system itself. And I've already pulled up this so you can see the password you type does not meet password complexity. It does need to have a password that meets the complexity requirements. And so basically what we're going to look for is a password that has at least an uppercase, a symbol, a lowercase, and a number. Of those four things, it has to have three of those. And we want to typically have a password that is uh, going to be seven to eight characters long. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and type in my password now that meets those. And I've got a password that is eight characters long. It has a number, it has a symbol, and it has a lowercase. And so you just have to have that complexity going on with your password when you set it up. And I'm going to go ahead now and hit finish. And it will allow me to keep going. And after you've set up the password and it finishes the finalization of the operating system, you're now presented with the uh, lock screen here for us. And so if I press Control alt delete I should be able to log in. And there it is. And now I have successfully installed Windows Server 2012 onto my server.